CWPA Remote. Hi, I'm Matt Hawes, Director of Communications for the Collegiate Water Polo Association, and this is CWPA Remote. Joining me today is Michigan State University head club coach, Matt Latham. Nice to have you with us today. Thanks for having me. Well, let's start off with the easy question. Um, tell us a little about yourself, how you got into water polo, and what got you to Michigan State? Well, I first started uh, playing growing up. I'm the youngest of uh, our family, so my brother and sister both played uh, in high school, so that got me started. Um, I grew up a Spartan fan. My parents uh, went to Michigan State. A lot of our family went to Michigan State. Uh, so then I ended up going to school there. Uh, I actually started uh, coaching when I got to MSU, um, coaching a local high school team as an assistant coach. Um, did that uh, for a little while um, on the boys' side, uh, then eventually became the head coach. Uh, and then I actually took over the girls' program as well uh, for uh, a few years. And then from there, um, I actually went from the boys to the Michigan State club team. They were looking for a new coach on the men's side. Um, and that was back in 2014. Um, and then uh, a few years later in 2018, uh, the women's team was looking for a new coach. So then uh, naturally I just kind of stepped over and started helping, helping them out as well. So um, I feel like it was just yesterday uh, that, I, that I came to East Lansing, but then I realized how long ago it was. And I'm like, Time just kind of flew by there. Well, uh, what's been your biggest challenge as a head coach? You know, obviously you're coaching with the men and the women, so you're dealing with both of them. Uh, you know, but what's been your greatest challenge as a coach? You know, uh, I think the biggest challenge, it kind of depends on the season. Every season brings a new challenge just because the expectations are a little different. Uh, when I started with the men's team in 14, uh, I believe they had been uh, divisional runner-up uh, for a couple years in a row. Um, the year before, uh, I took it over. They lost an overtime game in the Big Ten Championship. So, obviously, that team was very senior-heavy. Uh, they wanted to win. They wanted to win now. Um, so, that was certainly a unique challenge back then uh, when we did actually finally go over the top and, and, and win that division title, win the Big Ten title. Uh, the women's team, uh, when I first took it over, you know, the expectations might have been a little different. Um, they still wanted to do well. Um, the, the divisional structure was, was I think, a little different. Uh, Michigan's been a powerhouse on the women's side uh, since as far back as I think anybody can remember. Um, so that certainly was a unique challenge. Ohio State uh, was very strong as well on the women's side. Um, so when I first took it over, I was kind of learning uh, how the mechanics work and how uh, just kind of the division played out. Um, so, and just kind of worry and focus more about getting better. Um, that did translate a little bit of a surprise in 19 to winning the women's title, uh, which I think was the first time since 2008 uh, that the Michigan State women had won uh, the Big Ten title. So um, certainly, uh, certainly has been a little dip, bit different on both sides. Also going back to the men on the men's side, uh, we went from that senior heavy team to the following year having a very young team. So obviously the expectations changed there a little bit and kind of built it back up uh, to 18 uh, when we had a really good regular season. Um, unfortunately didn't finish the way we would have liked uh, losing in the big 10 final to uh, this past fall in 2019. Uh, finally, again, kind of getting over the hump uh, still with a pretty young team. Um, uh, so uh, and then doing pretty well at nationals as well, uh, which was a good experience, I think, for the guys. Uh, so, so like I said, every year is different. Um, and I know with the men's men's side uh, in 2020 or 21, whenever it comes, uh, we we have pretty high expectations to do pretty well. Um, and then, you know, on the women's side, obviously, we still want to do as well as we possibly can. Well, I mean, you're you're in an area which has a Great water polo history. I mean, just in terms of collegiate club teams, you have Michigan that's been successful. Michigan State on the men's side was successful for a number of years, number of national titles. And Grand Valley State uh, has also won its fair share of national titles. Um, how do you deal with having 
that many good teams in your state, not alone just in your division for the Big Ten. Uh, how do you handle having that many teams that are in such a high caliber? And, you know, how do you face, you know, how do you take on those teams? Uh, how do you prepare your team for taking on, you know, arguably teams that you could see, you know, you know, that have a shot to make the title game in the Big Ten every year and to you know, be in that on that cusp of uh, constantly making national collegiate club championships? I, I think, first of all, it makes it a lot of fun knowing full well that you have a lot of good competition, not only in the state of Michigan, but as you said, in the Big Ten. I think what people don't always realize is, is that the Midwest does have a lot of good water polo. Sometimes this talent gets overlooked by the varsity programs around the country, whether it's because, you know, the kids just want to stay close to home. Um, there is kind of a draw to a Big Ten University to begin with, I think, for a lot of people. I know a lot of kids in Michigan, um, not necessarily everybody, but a lot of kids, when they grow up, you're either a Wolverine or a Spartan, mm -hmm. um, and then you kind of have the ambition to go to one of those two schools to begin with. Um, so I think that lends to getting a lot of talent. Um, both for all the Michigan teams as well as uh, for all the Big Ten teams. Um, and then just competing in the division itself, I mean, you can't – you don't have an off game. Um, you know, whether you're playing Ohio State, you know, Wisconsin, Indiana, Purdue, mm -hmm. Illinois, whoever it is, um, you're, you're going to have – going to be lining up against, against a quality team and a quality program, uh, which then kind of gets you focused and excited – uh, uh, to be able to come play tournaments. Um, I do think uh, we're also kind of in a unique position that uh, our club division is tied to already an actual athletic conference. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I could be wrong, but I think we might be, it might be the only one on the club side in the CWPA that's, that's truly like that from top to bottom. Yeah. Um, so I think that alone gets everybody kind of excited to play just because the games, you know, the games mean more. Um, I, I'd even say, you know, even with all due respect to Grand Valley, and I know there's been a lot of battles there, that for Michigan and Michigan State, you know, that is the game that, that, that you want to play, you want to participate in. Um, and, and, I, and, and, you know, I say that even knowing, you know, what about 15 years ago, um, Grand Valley and Michigan State had some great battles in nationals. I think both mm -hmm. teams won a national title against the other one. Mm -hmm. um, and I know there was a run there of like three or four years where I think somebody from the state of Michigan at least made the national final, if mm -hmm. not won it. Um, so, so the battles are there. Um, but like I said, when you play Michigan, you know, as, as, a, as a Spartan, it just means more. Um, that natural robbery, the guys know each other, the, the, the women's team, they, you know, they played high school polo against each other. They played club polo against each other, uh, you know, through, through their club teams. And they just know each other. Um, at the same time, there's a lot of mutual respect, though, too. Um, so I always tell people, the specifically for us, the Michigan-Michigan State game is always a little bit different. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun. You know, we do a non-conference game with them uh, at our pool when we host our tournament. Um, whenever they come up here, we have a, you know, a pretty large crowd show up for the game. Whenever we played them down in Ann Arbor, there's usually a pretty big crowd for the game. Um, and it's just... It's just unique. I've actually had people say, you know, this should be varsity uh, because when they see this, I mean, obviously there's other factors there that mm -hmm. they, they got to be dealt with. Um, but, but they're, I mean, I mean, they're not wrong. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to watch. And the other thing is those games are usually good games. Um, I remember my first year uh, in 2014 with the men's team. I think every game was a one goal game. Um, and uh, if I remember correctly, I think we lost the first two games that, that, I, that I coached with them, and then we finally got them in the Big Ten final. Um, this past year, you know, our first game went – actually, both games we played them went into overtime. Um, so so it's it, – they're, they're close games. Um, I can say the same thing about Ohio State. Uh, the, the first time we played them in our conference game, uh, it was a tight uh, one-goal overtime game. So, so playing games like that is a lot of fun. Um, and like I said, it gets, it gets guys interested. And then I think the high school kids that play see that. So it kind of helps them gravitate towards, towards coming, you know, to a Michigan state, to a Michigan and to a grand Valley. So. Well, I always like to end these things with one question, uh, looking back, 
what is one piece of advice that you wish you knew when you started out that you know now in terms of be it coaching or just be it in terms of uh, handling two different teams during a season uh, or be it from the administration standpoint of dealing with your administration? Uh, what's one piece of advice you would offer to somebody? If you could go back and even talk to yourself when you started out, what's one piece of advice you would offer yourself? I would, you know, I would say enjoy it. Um, it you know, I mentioned uh, off, you know, on the top that it's, that it, it, it goes by fast um, and, and enjoy, you know, being able to uh, connect, being able to mentor, teach, coach uh, young men and women as they're going through their collegiate experience. Um, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, so that, uh, you know, you might think even, especially even in whether you have what you think is a talented group or a group that might need a little more work, um, it's, it's, you just got to sit back, take a deep breath and enjoy it. Because before you know it, you know, 2014 turns into 2020. And then, you know, eventually, you know, I'm going to blink here and it's going to be 2025. And, and, you know, I think, I think it's important uh, to be able to sit back, you know, connect with the kids as much as you can. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, really, really enjoy, you know, everything, every step of the way. Um, the only other thing I would say is uh, make sure you trust. Uh, if, if you have, if, make sure you trust yourself so that if you have kind of a process or a goal in mind, realize that it's not like flipping and turning the light switch on. You've you got to work towards it. Um, like, I, like I've mentioned, I've had, you know, young teams, I've had experienced teams and inexperienced teams. With the inexperienced teams, especially being a, you know, a school that's got the history, mm -hmm. they might want to try to live up to that history right away when you got to realize that it takes time. Um, so, you know, you got you to crawl before you can walk. You got to walk before you can run, so to speak. Um, and I think if you understand that, things get a lot easier and you can enjoy yourself, you know, as, as, as you do it, uh, certainly more than you may, you know, otherwise do. So. All right. Seems like a good place to end. Uh, Coach, thanks for doing this for us and best luck, best, uh, luck with potential for the men's season and potential for the women's season this upcoming year. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks.